Welcome into the Inside Carolina Podcast brought to you by Johnny T-Shirt and JohnnyT-Shirt.com. I'm your host, Ross Martin. We have Greg Barnes and Jason Staples, and today we're breaking down UNC's wide receivers, a, uh, a talented group with uh, some experience, not a ton of experience. Go through the depth chart here for y'all. We have at slot sophomore Josh Downs. You have Antoine Green, Bo Corrales, a super senior, Choffrey Brown coming off an injury in the spring, but should be good to go uh, this summer and into preseason camp. Emory Simmons coming off a pretty good season in 2020. Then kind of you get to guys who haven't played as much. Justin Olson, Stephen Gosnell, Ty Lee Craft, uh, and then the true freshmen who all arrived in January. Gavin Blackwell, J.J. Jones, and Kobe Passor. I'm going to start. We'll start with Greg again. Um, you know, this group, you have you have guys who've done some stuff in, in Corrales and Shoffrey Brown and Emory Simmons. You have Josh Downs, who showed a lot in the spring in the spring game and in the Orange Bowl, and who expects to be the number one guy for UNC. Just in general, what do you think about this group, Greg? Uh, players that stand out, and who do you think will kind of be the top three, top two guys for for Sam Howe in 2021? Yeah, well, I think there's a lot of question marks legitimately at running back. I really don't have the same concerns for wide receiver. Um, I, I'm on record to say, I think Bo Corrales is going to be the, the breakout player for the offense this year. I, I think you know, his his blend of size and speed um, and his ability to go up and get the ball is really going to shine this year. He, he's shown us in flashes, but provided he's completely healthy, which there's no reason to believe he won't be after that sports hernia surgery uh, last year. Um, I, I think that's, that's a key piece of this puzzle. Um, and he's really, you, you're not going to make up necessarily for De'Ami Brown's speed on the outside, mm -hmm. but Corrales will give you a lot of different things there, especially down in the red zone. And then you add in Josh Downs. I mean, I think that's a, that's a really good kind of one, two punch, but I think you also have a lot of other guys. I mean, um, Antoine Green is, is a guy that we know he has talent. I've uh, been, been waiting to see exactly what um, he does with the, the mental side of things. I think that's been somewhat of a challenge for him. Emory Simmons is a guy that while he may not be the fastest, may not be the most athletic or the biggest, um, he's very much a um, technician. I mean, they say he does everything perfect. Uh, and so that's that's a key kind of guy to have. And you look at some of these young guys. Um, I mean, Chaffee Brown, we know he's, he's fast. Um, he's a guy that maybe can take over for his brother. Uh, but you know, Gavin Blackwell, I thought looked really good. And spring ball, I'm backing up Josh Downs at the slot. Uh, you mentioned Gosnell. I mean, he really popped to me in the spring. He's got a lot of speed, a lot more than I thought uh, thought he would have. But he's a guy that they, they really like. So I think there's a lot of options here. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, you know, I think it begins with Corrales. Um, and then Josh Downs, we saw what he could do in the Orange Bowl. So while you do lose some key pieces, I, mean, I think Sam Howell's got a lot of options to work with. Yeah, I think losing Diamond Brown is huge. We just don't know who can step in. I mean, we hope you hope that Toffrey Brown can step in and be that guy. They liked Antoine Green in the spring. They said he, he was he made the most improvement from the previous year to where he is now. Antoine Green. I mean, this is his time to shine. It's kind of now or never for Antoine Green. Um, they really like JJ Jones. I spoke to a source and they like what he did. He's a true freshman who could compete. For, for reps as early as 2021. Of course, we know Josh Downs, uh, what he can do. I think with Bo, it's all about him staying healthy. Um, Jason, with you, I'm gonna, let's talk about Josh Downs for a second. You know, can you explain the role of the slot receiver for our listeners? Because we see, you know, Dad, what Daz did in the slot, but they also make plays downfield. How does that role kind of fit in um, – for UNC and Phil Longo, realizing that I mean Josh Downs and Daz Newsom can both make a bunch of plays downfield, and they're two of the fastest guys on the team. And Josh Downs is going to be a critical player for for Sam Howe in this offense. Yeah, so there's a few things to to get at there. Number number one is the the primary thing with the slot receivers in Longo's offense is that they're going to be asked to 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 do a lot of grass reading, essentially to to explain that you're you're looking at they're going to have situations where there, there's more of what you might call option routes or mm -hmm. uh, little adjustments in a route that they have. Let's say they, let's say you have a, a slant route from a slot receiver on an, on the outside a slant route is a slant route. <laughs> you, you, you're going to, you're going to say, take three steps or five steps and you're coming inside and on a, you know, 
roughly 45 degree angle. And there's a little bit of adjustment there, depending on coverage and all of that. If they're pressing, you're going to do this or that with the slot receivers. You're, you're on more of a search route. Your, your job is to get inside and find grass. And so one of the most valuable things for the slot receiver is you have to have a guy who has sort of basketball quickness in the ability to change direction and find open space. But it's more about that latter part, finding the space and being able to see and, and intuitively make these adjustments on the fly and at, at speed. So the quickness and the physical stuff is really important. But one of the things that Daz Newsom really excelled at was understanding like, okay, here's what I'm seeing. There's where the grass is going to be. And I'm going to be there uh, or on little zig routes, you know, you, you, you know, okay. You, you press inside. If they wall you off, you jump outside. If they don't wall you off, you just keep going. You know, there's these sorts of things that the, that the slot receivers are going to be asked to do in this offense uh, to where you, you have to understand that, you know, oh, well, when that guy's running with me, I need to keep going. When he stops, that means I need to settle just a little inside of him. The, there's lots of these little things that the slots have to do. And you have to be able to do that processing quickly in your head and then have the, the physical capacity to be quick enough to really make those things happen right away. The other thing, though, that, that Longo does with his slots is they do a lot of things like slot fades and yep. um and, and he does a really good job. Longo has some, some distinctives in terms of how he coaches his offense. I really like how he coaches the corner route. Uh, you know, they, they do a lot to, to maximize what they're able to get based on some of the advantages that are there for a slot receiver against the kind of coverage that he's going to be against. And if you think about this, normally the two best coverage players on a defense are the two outside corners. Those are the guys that you're, you want to you want to have your two best guys in terms of true cover players there. And then the slot guy often is matched up either against a safety, sometimes against a linebacker or against a nickel back. And normally the nickel is, say, the third best corner on the team. Well, you know what? I'll take my best guy against their third best corner every time, right? And especially when in the slot, you have what's often called a two-way go. So when you go vertical from the slot, you have the ability to go outside in terms of, you know, when, you, when you're going on the vertical, you can either favor the outside of the field or you can favor the inside. And either one is really available in the slot. Whereas on the outside, you don't really have as many places you can go out, right? Yeah. So you have to play, favor the inside a little bit more. That makes it harder to cover the slot. And what Longo does is he really uses that capacity to scheme up certain matchups for his slot receivers for some shot plays here and there where he's going to get that guy going upfield on a, on a fade route. And unless there's the outside corner, who's playing that deep third outside of him, that gives the, the, the quarterback 20 yards outside of the slot receiver to throw to where that guy can fade to it. It's really hard to cover that. So if you've got a guy that can run at that level and he's already showing all this stuff inside, all of a sudden he's off, off to the races outside and it's a really hard cover. So that's really what you're be, you're asking this guy to do in this offense, and all of that fits Josh Downs basically to a T. Yeah, that's some football guy porn there, Greg. I enjoyed. <laughs> I've never seen someone laugh at a uh, slant route, just saying slant route, and Jason was just laughing because he loves it so much. Um, all right, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get a little bit more into wide receivers, a little more into the depth chart. Get to know some of these guys a little bit better. First, I want to talk to you about Giant T-Shirt and GiantT-Shirt.com, your one-stop shop for everything UNC. Uh, get your tank tops, your shirts, sweatshirts for the fall, jerseys, baseball jerseys, soccer jerseys, basketball jerseys, and, of course, football jerseys. Head to Giant T-Shirt on Franklin Street, so local, and then head online to GiantT-Shirt.com. Use that promo code for inside Carolina subscribers to get 10% off. Guys, their customer service is unbelievable. Mm. We've had tons of people tell us uh, testimonies about just how if you need something, they can kind of get it to you. They can work with you to get your stuff uh, as quick as possible. It's a great place to get gifts. Um, you know, you have a couple birthdays coming up or you just want to, you know, give a gift to a family member or a friend, get a bunch of T-shirts or sweatshirts. It's easy to do and knock it out. Of course, use that promo code. The Johnny T-shirt and GiantT-shirt.com. Support local support uh what giant t-shirt does for us 
be a quick break. We'll be right back. Now you're a you're a you're a big uh, tank top guy, right, Ross? I mean, this is sun. Your son's out, guns out, guy, right? <laughs> Make sure you cut this out, John. Uh, <laughs> no, I used to be. In your 30s, you can't wear. Uh, <laughs> Don't cut this. Don't yeah. cut this, John. All right, guys, we're back um, with wide receivers and get out here with a couple more things, Greg. Um, you, we went over the depth chart a little bit. I want to go a little bit more in depth with what UNC has. I mean, who do you think are the, are the playmakers and the guys that – I mean, we can guess all we want. I mean, who do you think are going to be the guys that really step up? You said Bo. We, I think we know Josh Downs. And the other guys we just haven't seen as much. Um, I mean, Emory Simmons, could it be Antoine Green? Could it be a freshman? I mean, what, is there anything you saw from spring you can tell us about, you know, that deep threat guy or the guy that's going to have that big game to kind of fill the needs that, that UNC really has? They have – there's tons of room for production to kind of step up. Yeah, well, one thing that, you know, in following Mac Brown over the years um, is that he's big on production. And he's, he's big on if you've been there before, he can trust you. Um, he's talked a lot about that in the running back room. And that's why Ty Chandler is going to get a lot of snaps early because he's played in big games. And I think you can kind of base off of that. Uh, this is how the wide receiver rotation is going to stack up. We know Josh Downs is going to play a lot. We know Bo Corrales is going to play a lot. We know Emory Simmons is going to play a lot because Emory Simmons has proven in games that he can be productive and do the right things. And he's good blocking down the field, all those types of things. So those are three guys right there that you know are going to play. Chaffee Brown has played a good bit, um, you know, provided he comes back and is completely healthy and does what he needs to do. Mm-hmm. I imagine with his speed, he'll play a lot. So that's four guys, right? Antoine Green has made strides. He's seen a little bit of playing time. Uh, you have to figure he's going to work into the rotation. So now you get into a situation where you have all these other guys, you know, Glavin Blackwell, J.J. Jones, Justin Olson, Stephen Gosnell, guys who really haven't played. Um, and they're going to have to prove it in training camp, but provided they do that, then it's going to be a matter of, okay, we'll give them some time early in the season and see who capitalizes, see who takes advantage of those opportunities. And I think that's really what we're going to see. So, you know, against Virginia tech, you know, who's going to be on the field. Um, unless one of these young guys really pops in training camp, you know, the guys that have already played and that have proven themselves will see the bulk of the snaps. As we go each passing week, though, you'll start to see more of these young guys get opportunities, provided they earn them in practice and in the little bit of game time that they have. Um, I, you know, as we've said, I think there's a lot of good talent here. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is young, but they're going to lean on those veteran guys and the guys that have experience uh, early and often, I think. Yeah, what I've noticed about how Phil Longo and, and Mac Brown and, and UNC like to do their offense, I mean, they'll, yeah, they'll lean on the, the three or four guys that are producing. Same with running backs. Same with wide receivers. They don't go super deep in the depth chart. Like Roy Williams would go 10 deep in the first 20 games, whereas I think with football, I mean, you, you pick your guys, you ride them, and you have to win the competitions in, in preseason camp and practices to move up. I'm pretty high on J.J. Jones, uh, even though he hasn't played the snap yet. Uh, Jason, any, you, I know you mentioned kind of off air, you want to speak about kind of that second group of receivers vying for time. Uh, what do you think? What have you seen? I, I think Joffrey Brown can be a guy who can really step in and be that deep threat because we did see a little bit of that. He just wasn't given as much time um, last season. and But when he did, he, he made plays. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be interesting because each of those guys sort of in that second group. So you, you got Downs and Corrales who, you know, as long as Corrales is healthy, I think those guys, you, you pencil them in as starters and expect big years from those guys. The other three that are in that kind of second group, each of them brings something different to the table. And that, that to me is one of the more interesting dynamics of this is none of them are, are super experienced. All of them have flashed a lot of ability, a lot of talent, but it's different kinds of things. And so you wonder, you know, thinking about this as a coach, how do you, how do you platoon these guys to get the most out of each one of them? to make sure that they're on the field in the right situations to maximize what they bring to the table. Because, I mean, Choffrey Brown is the fastest guy they've had in some years. I mean, he's, he, he brings that ability to take the top off a of defense and, and run away. That's what he brings to the table. And at the same point, a little bit less consistent in terms of his, uh, of his hands and a few other things that, you know, still need to come around. But if he starts to become a more complete receiver, well, you know, you can't really, that's that's speed you can't teach 
And you want that on the field as much as possible because he changes the scoreboard when he gets the ball in his hands. On the flip side, if it's third down and, you know, third and 14 and you want a guy to get open and, and make a contested catch and, and be sure that guy's going to catch the ball with the game on the line, you probably want that to be Emory Simmons on this roster. He's, he, I think he's got the best hands of the group. He's a guy that, that he's, you know where he's going to be. He's shown the ability you know, to, to, to moss a guy, as we saw against, uh, against Notre Dame. He's shown some of that capacity to, uh, to make those contested catches. He understands his limitations. He understands who he is as a receiver and knows how to maximize himself. And he's a guy I think is going to be really valuable for Sam Howell if, if, if how's going to need consistency out there with him, with, with the new group receivers. And you wonder, okay, this is a guy that I think is probably, you can probably count on to be the most consistent in the group, but he also brings the least to the table in terms of, you know, being able to run by you and, you know, big body and some of these other things. And then you have Antoine green who might be the most talented of the, of the bunch on the outside, big body runs like a deer, uh, you know, soft hands, all of these other things. But at the same point, there's been times where, you know, he's just not quite broken through with the consistency and, and, and the playmaking that you expect from him. And again, if he puts it all together, you want him out there. So it's a good problem to have in terms of having to figure out who's going to be out there. But you hope that at least one or two of those guys really steps up and becomes a legit number two or number three option. And if that happens, you're really, you're really pleased with that. So I'm curious to see how they're going to divide the reps up. I'm curious to see how this is going to work in terms of who's going to play what roles and who's going to be on the field in certain situations because of, you, you don't want to be predictable when you put, you know, Choffrey Brown out there, everybody goes, Oh, deep, deep, deep plant. And you, you can't do that. So th that makes it really interesting to look at in terms of how they're going to platoon these guys, how they're going to maximize what they bring to the table. So I, I'm, I'm really interested in this group. Yeah, and if, I mean, when you have a Heisman candidate and Sam Howell, in order to win the Heisman and be successful and win games, you got to have production from – it's a team sport, production from wide receivers. So there's going to have to be guys that can make plays and, and make Sam look good just as he's going to make them look good. All right, guys, uh, we're going to get out here quickly, but it'd be remiss if I didn't talk about tight ends briefly here. I think they always get forgotten, and I forgot about them. Um, let's go through the tight end room here. Garrett Walston's back for his super season, uh, super senior year. Kamari Morales is entering his third year. And behind him are just guys we have not seen very much. John Copenhaven, uh, Kendall Carr, and then the true freshman Bryson Nesbitt, a 6'6 guy out of the Charlotte area. So we can go to Greg here quickly, and we'll bounce back and forth here. I mean, Gary Walston has been solid, not a super productive um, <clears throat> pass catcher, maybe because he just hasn't gotten the chances but really reliable as a blocker, developed this year, and he was a big name this spring as a guy who's taking that next step, a senior, a leader in the room, um, and a, definitely a guy who's going to play the most of all the tight ends and be a big factor in the offense as a leader and, and as a playmaker and as a kind of security blanket for Sam Howe. Greg, your takes briefly on the, the tight end room. Yeah, I think you, you hit the nail on the head there with, with Garrett Walston, and I think the fact that, that North Carolina is going to be – we're going to try to be a little more uh, kind of traditional in their running sets. Uh, I think you're going to see Garrett Walston be, really be utilized even more as a, as a blocker um, in some of those run schemes, which he can do because he's a, a veteran guy. He's an old guy now. Um, Phil Longo is not one that we've seen thus far to heavily rely on the tight ends, but I do agree that you know, he's the kind of guy that can be a escape valve for Sam Howell especially when you don't have Javante Williams or Michael Carter coming out of the backfield um, like he did last year. Um, one guy, though, that, that really impressed me this spring, and I think he's probably the most athletic of the bunch, is Kamar Morales. Um, trying to remember which scrimmage it was. It may have been the spring game. He had two big explosive plays. Uh, one, he just kind of mauled somebody, and the other one, he ran away from some defensive backs. Um, and so having that type of athlete at, at tight end is also a pretty good blocker. Uh, you can do some different things with a player like that. And then, of course, Copenhaver and Carr, um, you know, talking with the coaches, th they impressed. So I think even though they may not get a lot of time this year, I think this room is, is set up to have some success moving forward. Uh, but it all begins and ends with Garrett Walston, of course. And if you listen to the Scoot podcast, Don Callahan, Callahan and I have talked about Bryson Nesbitt. I mean, he's kind of a, a guy they haven't had. 
He's six, six, he's more long and rangy compared to kind of the bigger bodies that are in the room already. So he might not be a factor this season, but he may be a guy who can give UNC and Phil Longo that kind of bigger kind of NFL style tight end. Jason, I'm going to give you one minute to talk about tight ends and UNC's offense and we'll get out of here. Okay. Go. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the biggest thing is that Walston returning gives them a lot of flexibility and, and, if you do have some questions about consistency with the young group of receivers, Walston is a guy that gives you, gives you a lot of consistency and gives you somebody that Howell feels comfortable with and really had a, a good second half of last year in particular as a receiver. And he's a, he's a, he's a, uh, uh, he's, he really did. He was a better blocker. I think than anybody gives him credit for last year as well. Yeah. So I think that gives you a lot on the offensive side to, to be pleased with. And, you know, I think uh, overall, uh, I thought Morales was better in the spring than I expected him to be too. So I'm optimistic. I'm bullish on what they've got at the tight end position. I don't think it's a huge part of what Longo hopes for when his offense is humming, but it gives them some flexibility and, 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 and again, gives them the ability to know that they're going to at least have some consistency for how moving forward. And I think that's, that's really where that's the most important thing. Yeah. I'd say Gary Wallace was a great blocker for, for UNC last year in the run game. I mean, they, he was uh, Mac Brown talked about him a lot about what he did. You can kind of tell him he's heavily involved in, in what they do in run blocking and sealing the edges and all those things and having a fifth year guy, that leadership, that veteran presence. I mean, he's an old school blue collar guy. Uh, that'll be good for the, the whole team and kind of just show people how, how to work hard, how to get things done. Cause he wasn't, you know, he wasn't much of a factor his first two, three seasons, and he had to work himself to where he is now to, to being that starter and being that guy. All right, guys, wide receivers and tight ends. Appreciate Greg. Appreciate Jason. Um, moving along here with the offense, and we'll get to the defense in July. Appreciate you listening to these position previews presented to you by Johnny T-Shirt and johnnytshirt.com.